Okay, so this is uh, the, our campus, okay. Um, thank you. Okay, so now I'll go to my main presentation. Sorry, okay. okay. So as I said, I will uh, talk about uh, how theoretical and uh, experimental investigations can go together for different applications. So first application I would cover is energy storage devices. So you know, uh, you know the current advancements or progresses um, are like mainly uh, have been achieved because of uh, semiconductor industry and uh, computing softwares. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you can see that lithium-ion batteries they are playing a pivotal role uh, to expedite this progress. So uh, these uh, lithium-ion battery, the first uh, was you know in 1991 was uh, used by Sony in camcorder, and then after that. Uh, people have tr uh, like tried in different. You can see, uh, um, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, ranging from your, you know, wearables, uh, mobile phones, and um, your like rover on Mars, and uh, your Tesla, all electrical vehicles, uh, even this uh, renewable energy, uh, they also need backup. Uh, so all these things are relying on uh, lithium-ion battery. So what is a lithium-ion battery? Um, so if you see, it typically has two electrodes, okay, like anode and cathode, and it has a conducting electrolyte between two, electro, uh, between two electrodes. So during charging, like for example, when you charge your phone, or your mobile phone, so during charging, what happens, these lithium ions um, travel from cathode and go into anode material, okay, and during discharging, when you are using your phone, so these lithium ions travel from anode to cathode. So this is like a process, a reversible process. So you, you, you do achieve uh, the electrical uh, power to, to use for your uh, device. And this is typical uh, commercially used uh, uh, anode material. So my main topic is about anode, okay? So how we, uh, which materials uh, we can use as anode. So the typical commercialized is carbon, graphite-based, okay? And um, the, the theoretical capacity of graphite base is 365 something. Uh, milliampere hour per gram. Okay, so the the main research goal nowadays is to make the battery smaller and lighter. Okay, so if you see uh, different technologies, uh, the battery technologies, lithium metal is has, like is the, the most suitable, but it's not stable. Uh, so that's why uh, they kind of use lithium metal. Uh, but the, the second candidate is lithium ion. So it has highest you know potential, and uh, these uh, these are few materials that people are trying to uh, use as an anode material, okay, because there are two uh, electrodes, anode and cathode, so uh, we will mainly focus on anode material. So these materials, they show their capacity, okay. So you can see for lead and, uh, and uh, lithium tin, germanium, aluminum, lithium silicon. So you can see lithium silicon has highest uh, known capacity so far, so, okay. So for example, if, if uh, pupil uh, could we succeeded to get that silicon-based battery, so your phone will uh, run for 10 days more. So it's like a 10 times uh, higher capacity. But there are problems. So uh, the problems are related to uh, when there, there's a physical process happens, when lithium ions go into the host material, uh, in, like interstitial sites, so it, the material will expand. Okay. Um, Does it break then? Oh, yeah, it, it breaks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it breaks. Yeah, so you see here. So these are uh, like uh, you know 
main um, mechanisms to to that that fail this uh, battery system. So, for example, if this is the original particle of an old material, you have lithiation. I mean, your lithium ion go into the interstitial sites, and it will expand. So, after this expansion, uh, it will have a crack. After many, especially after many cycles, you will lose the the contact with the current collector. So, your battery will uh, be failed. Uh, the next is morphological changes. Of course, there are phases uh, that are ch changing uh, because of this lithiation. So, for example, for silicon, there are six phase changes uh, throughout the process. So, these phase changes uh, also can cause uh, the cracks in your uh, electrode. Uh, number three mechanism is unstable SCI. So, SCI is a solid elect uh, electrolyte interface. Okay, so you have electrode and there is electrolyte. So at the interface, there is a very complex molecule uh, or composite. Okay? So this uh, thickness of that SCI layer is important. With the passage of time, it builds up. Uh, so that can cause also failure or also can hinder the further motion of lithium ion. Uh, in 2012, uh, our Professor Lee, he also like, uh, discovered that for silicon case, uh, during the lithiation process, the expansion or vo the volume expansion is 300 percent, but it's not only isotropic, it's anisotropic. So that expansion you can see is not re really uh, uniform, it's anisotropic expansion. So that causes these kind of cracks. Okay, so what about the motivation of this work? Uh, uh, we know the silicon has highest known capacity, so we have to compromise a bit because it's not stable yet. So what the next suitable candidate is tin. So we found that tin has a high mechanical stability as compared to silicon. And if you compare their also volume, percent volume expansion, so you can see it's, uh, it's, it's lower, it's 240% uh, as compared to 300% uh, of silicon. And also tin has isotropic expansion, so that also reduces some uh, complexity of the process. Uh, it has better mechanical properties. So if you see uh, this table, uh, so you can uh, easily compare for both cases, tin and silicon. Uh, their capacity, of course, we're going to compromise on capacity a little bit, but still it's three times higher than the co current commercialized technology. Um, and uh, it has no creep. So creep, uh, maybe some of you, if, uh, if they know the creep is a mechanism that relaxes the, the strains and stresses. Okay, so that creep, uh, so this was actually the main uh, discovery uh, for this material. Uh, and we published this first time, like introducing the creep uh, relaxations in tin and old material. And in, by nature, uh, intrinsic properties, they are ductile and uh, silicon is brittle. Okay? And also if you compare their modulus value, so lower Young's modulus mean it's going to have lower lithium induced, uh, lithiation induced stresses or strain. So when you compare both of them, you can see uh, the expected value is lower for tin. Uh, and diffusivity, lithium ion diffusivity, because they have to diffuse faster, uh, faster in a faster, faster pace. So uh, diffusivity is uh, higher for uh, tin case. Okay. So also there is a known fact about uh, size-dependent uh, properties. For example, if your bulk material will have uh, different properties as compared to nano or micro materials, mechanical properties. Uh, so, so for that reason, uh, we did use um, uh, FIB, okay, focus ion beam tool to dig our tin micropillar uh, in the tin bulk uh, tin film. So this is tin micropillar, and then we did our own testing using mecha mechanical tool, mechanical testing tools like nano indentation, nano compression, all those tools to to measure the properties, uh, so that we can have a real picture of uh, our electrode. So these are like before and after testing, and this is uh, uh, the, the result of our creep. Okay. Okay. So this slide will just uh, briefly show the mechanism that we use uh, for our numerical modeling. So numerical modeling uh, is um, is like is opposite to DFT. So DFT is at atomic scale, but numerical modeling is at some like micro scale, or you have to assume some kind of continuous uh, material. So uh, we, we do use uh, mathematical, mathematical equations, and there are many softwares, uh, for example, for this uh, uh, 
uh, study, we did use uh, CAMSOL. So in the CAMSOL, we, uh, we, we tried lithium ion diffusion. We tried to replicate this process uh, and using a fixed second law, okay? And then as a result of that lithium ion insertion into the host material, there are some strains and stresses. Uh, so these are the stresses that will be uh, like there in the, in, the, in the electrode that we need to look into. Okay, so here you can see, for example, this, uh, the left side, the lithium ions are going into the electrode. So uh, from, from the surface, it's like the maximum lithium ion, um, well, the, 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 the amount of magnitude of lithium ions, and from the core, it's gonna like build up slowly uh, with diffusion. And these are the stresses that are uh, expected to be induced during this process. So if you imagine this is micropillar, so in the micropillar you will have the stress, uh, radial stress along the radius uh, and the hoop stress along the circumference and axial stress. So these stresses are important when you uh, see the lithiation process or when you are concerned about the um, mechanical stability of your electrode. Okay, so in this study, we, we did uh, uh, you reveal that how creep relaxations are helping to mitigate the mechanical stresses. Uh, so you can compare the stress value uh, along the radius of micropillar, thin micropillar, uh, when, when they are SOC 100% mean when they are fully lithiated to their maximum capacity. So you, this is uh, the case for elastic deformation, so it has around one gigapascal of stress, and it will be reduced when you allow plastic relaxations, uh, but further reduced to uh, like very low value uh, in the red uh, colored you know, graph for the creep relaxation for our material. And same goes for hoop stress, okay? So you, here, here you can see the mechanism how creep, are, uh, how creep is helping. So if you have a case without creep, the black color, so you can see after reaching the yield point, uh, as a function of time, the stress remains the same. But when we use our material, thin uh, micropillar, so the stresses will go down with the passage of time. That's how it, they are helping. Um, and uh, the, 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 these uh, gradients show creep relaxations, plasticity, and elastic. Okay, another uh, factor, uh, for example, for the battery case is, uh, what is the safe, uh, you know, the critical size or the safe area where it will not crack after lithiation. So we call it critical size to avert the fracture. So I did use uh, Abacus uh, software and uh, induce a crack uh, on purpose. And then we can calculate the values of uh, stress intensity factor. So those, uh, and then we can compare with the fracture, t uh, fracture toughness value and that will uh, dictate the safe region. So you can see for our case, uh, uh, this is uh, at a function of charging rate because if you are charging your phone at, at a faster rate, it will have uh, low cyclic value or low actually life. So this is one of the concern also currently. So for example, for, for, for charging rate of C by 10, so C by 10 mean your battery will be charged in ton, 10 hours to maximum capacity. So or C by 10 rate, uh, at the dia of three micrometer of micropillar, your safe size needs to be 5.2 micrometers. So that's uh, very big. I mean, because if, go, if, it, if it goes to nano size, it's more difficult to handle. So we, the, the best case is to make it in micron range. So later, uh, we also, you know, um, like verified using experiments. So we did, um, use FIB for this is thin micropillar and with the lithiation you can see how much size is uh, increasing uh, because of this lithium uh, ion insertion or interstitial sites filling up. So this volume uh, after some you know cycles like charging, discharging, charging, discharging, it needs to be gone away. Okay. So our, our experimental have proved that the, the theoretically calculated value of critical size, 5.2 micrometer, uh, was right at C by 10 rate. So that means tin is more stable than silicon at uh, this moment because of creep relaxation. This was a major conclusion of our work. Okay, another thing that uh, uh, 
we just published, uh, Nature Communication is utilizing the 2D materials for lithium-ion battery. So uh, for, this, uh, for this case, we did use uh, um, MOS2 ink, okay? And we uh, electrosprayed that ink on copper substrate and used it uh, for the lithium-ion uh, electrode material. So um, these, um, but, but because we, we did actually uh, iterations and optimized our electrospray uh, uh, variables to get this specialized or architected 3D MOS2 foam. So that foam, that, that pores, you know, these pores actually helped to uh, mitigate the expansion. If this is expanding, there are, uh, if the material is expanding, so there are like uh, pores that can accommodate that expansion. So the material will not have any cracks, so number one. Number two, it's also giving the, um, the way or pass for lithium ion to diffuse fastly to the core. So number two, so these, um, so this specialized uh, structure gave us uh, remarkable results. So you can see uh, this is at the at different scales. Uh, at one micrometer, you can see uh, these pores and the struts, all these uh, specialized you know, structure. So it helped us to get the very good results. Uh, so we also did uh, the COMSOL simulation to see uh, the mechanism, the physical background of how these foam uh, structures are helping to get the uh, good results. So you can see this is our unit cell, and then we combine those unit cells. So th these, are these are showing our uh, like diffusion process, and this is volume expansion process. So you can see from this point, re reaching to th at this point, you can see there's only 100% volume expansion. So that's uh, far uh, lower as compared to other technologies. And um, also, uh, one, of the one of the challenges for battery technology is to make a battery that can run for 1,000 cycles. So it's like a 10 years of age of a battery. So, so our, uh, you know, the, the structure has shown it's pretty good for 1,000 cycles as well, uh, this MOS2 form. Uh, so it has high cyclic life and mechanically robust. Uh, with lower volume expansion. And uh, we also did uh, compare with other materials uh, if we are using MOS2 crumples or MOS2 wrinkles or MOS2 bulk, so our foam was uh, like found to be uh, performing better. Okay, so another application I would go now to like after battery. Uh, as I said, uh, I, will reveal, uh, I will discuss two things. One uh, battery, another one is um, the reconfigurable display. But before going to that uh, area, I would like just like to highlight the research trends in current smart electronic devices. So what people are trying to achieve is uh, they should be flexible. Okay, like maybe pretty soon you will see your uh, maybe phone, flexible phone, all, all display, like they are bendable, they are rollable, so all those things. And they are needs to be stretchable, okay, and they are need to be reconfigurable. It's like automatically go back to the original shape. Uh, it's like a shape memory ally or something. And they, are, they have to be self-cleaning, okay. For example, uh, if, if you use your uh, solar cell and all those integrated technologies, so there is the dust all the time, so they have to be self-cleaning, um, uh, cap capable capability and anti-reflective, all those trends are going on. So we mainly focused on reconfigurable and uh, to make them flexible and stretchable. So I will show here uh, just to how to uh, like make them reconfigurable. So uh, these are few you know studies we did. For example, in this paper, what we did we uh, we, we we made a sensor that can actually. Uh, detect the health of a plant uh, for, uh, to after detecting the temperature, humidity, and resistance. So by tracking these all three things, we can track uh, the health of the, any plant, uh, that how it's going or what we need to do to save the life of tree or save the life of plant. So, and also other potential applications could be uh, you know, in, in biomedical field. So in biomedical field, you can see uh, these catheters, uh, balloon catheters. So they are like uh, flexible. They are conformable to the human skin. So they are not damaging. They are not physically damaging the human tissue. So all those uh, benefits it has. So as I said, uh, this, the reconfigurable display. So what does that mean? So for example, if this is your uh, iPhone or smartphone, okay. 
So you wanna increase the the display size, make it double. Okay. So if, so what you will see, uh, let's say if you stretch your phone like this. Okay. So during the uh, the stretching process, ideally we should have the same image resolution, right? But uh, practically we don't get it because uh, let's say if this is LED based. Uh, display so after stretching so the LEDs will evolve you know like gap so they will be moving apart so that will uh, degrade the resolution of our display uh, now uh, like this year Samsung and um, uh, other you know manufacturers they have uh, launched a phone that just like a foldable so it's like they're making like a double the size original size so their foldable is very you know old technology making the front of O old foldable phones. So they just combined two displays, two displays together. That's it. But ultimately what I believe the, this is gonna be the solution that you have to make it like in such a way that it's not actually a two display connected together, it's like a, something that can be stretched out. Okay. So uh, people have uh, like tried, you know, if, uh, if they, you see LEDs and then uh, when they uh, stretch so these LEDs uh, will evolve some gaps. So what we uh, we were actually inspired by Peacock, you know, okay. Uh, so you see when uh, they open up their you know fin, so there is no gap, right? So there is no gap. So this is something that we need to replicate into our uh, display. So very simple, uh, you know, idea we did use. We did uh, try a multi-level or multi-floor, you know, LEDs, okay? So it it's gonna give you one disadvantage that your phone or display gonna be a little bit thicker, right? But uh, it's still far better than the current uh, technologies. So you can uh, place your LEDs on different, you know, if you see this is one place, two, three, for all those places you can place your LEDs. And then when you will stretch, so you will have, uh, for example, if this is two by two array, up from the top, okay? So after stretching along y-axis, it will be like more LEDs coming from the bottom side to upwards. And when you stretch the other side, so there'll be no gaps. So it's like you made from two by two array to three by three array, uh, potentially, without any gap, okay? So you can see how we, uh, in, in console, uh, we, we replicated the idea, okay, so when you are stretching them along one axis and then the other axis, so you can get uh, no gaps and then it will be like working as a stretchable, reconfigurable display. So for the proof of concept, of course we are just uh, research oriented, like, you know, we cannot like manufacture like a Samsung or a company, but what we did, we did prove our idea, okay. So here they are 3D printed uh, prototypes. Okay, so that also shows the scalability of our work. So you can scale, you can make it scalable to any size or something. So and, uh, from two by two initial state, you are stretching along x axis and y axis, and then also when you wanna like make it again to the original size, you can go back. Okay, and we put our LEDs on those platforms. Okay, so this is two by two array. So when we stretched, so the red color, you know, they are like coming from different sides. And you see this now three by three, nine LEDs with no gaps. So if, you, if there is uh, no multi-floor, you will have like only four green color with a lot of gap and poor resolution of your display. So now your uh, display will have a greater, you know, resolution as compared to previous case. And when you go back, so from this state, you can go back easily to the original size of your display. Okay, so this was published in Advanced uh, Material Technologies. Yeah, so we also checked if uh, this stretching is really causing any mechanical damage or, or, or the stresses or strain in the structure. So uh, we have uh, found that the, the stresses are very low and only, uh, you know, the, 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 the part we need to here about is these links that are like joining uh, different islands or LEDs. Uh, but for our case, the, even at this link, the stress was very, very low in only megapascal. 
Okay, so um, other interesting applications uh, we did uh, work on is like, you know, this is marine uh, uh, sensor. So this marine sensor can uh, detect and uh, or track and measure the, the different parameters in, uh, in C, okay? So you can check uh, the temperature, you can check the pressure, you can check uh, like, like uh, salt contents, all those things. So this one full package can do all three tasks. So uh, we pasted this on, uh, uh, on the skin of fish and then we, so this was uh, covered by different media and also we got uh, CES and uh, Golden Edison Award 2020 uh, because of this work. So CES is the uh, biggest show in uh, Las Vegas every year. So we are all manufacturers, LEG, Apple, they do compete, they do. They, they go and they actually uh, show their outlook, the upcoming technology. So we, in 2020, we got award there, Best Innovation Award uh, for this uh, center. And also we are trying to make different uh, stretchable systems. Okay, so th these systems are um, helping to make all these devices stretchable and flexible. And uh, another is a stretchable thermal patch. So this is also our commercial product now. We uh, are, uh, are about to launch into the market. So this is um, a patch that can help your, like that can reduce your muscle pain or, or, or like, you know, it's like arth arthritis symptoms by using electrical, you know, very low current. And it's stretchable and flexible. So you, you don't need to buy like uh, for different part of your body, uh, different patches. You can just use one single patch and stretch it and like uh, paste on different part of your body. And they are controlled by your smartphone. So you just uh, set the temperature and then turn on and that's it. So they're gonna work for like uh, reducing your pain. It's like a pain management, digital pain management. And this, uh, uh, these are like a few, you know, areas we are now working on. Just how to make the um, uh, from solid battery to flexible lithium-ion battery. Because if you are going to make stretchable, flexible electronic devices, of course you need a battery that is flexible and stretchable itself. So we are working on different ideas, uh, like combining our own stretchable interconnects on those devices. Um, and also we are working on how to reduce the stresses and strain of those core shell structures. And uh, third area is self-powered lithium-ion batteries. So this is one of the ideas we are working on now. So this is outlook overall, okay? Uh, so this is uh, where actually our smart and uh, flexible, searchable devices will be leading to, heading to. So you can see, uh, like, they have uh, interesting applications, wearable, and they have um, uh, in energy harvesting and implantable and, piece of, and portable devices, communication, and after some time, you will see internet, internet of Things gonna happen, and also mobile healthcare. So, for example, uh, last year uh, we published a paper in the World Functional Material that uh, we developed the sensor that can track the swelling of your muscle if you have mumps or if you have any, you know, kind of um, uh, infection, viral infection. So you will have really swelling here, right? So that swelling pattern. Uh, no one knows actually what is the swelling pattern over the passage of time. So if you have a like sticker type sensor here, so it can track the swelling pattern and send a wireless low, la, the, the value to d your doctor. So the doctor can track your on, on the phone or something and can see uh, which you know precautions they need to take. Yeah, so that's it, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nadim. Okay. It was a great presentation. So any okay. questions? Let's go. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that, that one is interesting. Like if you uh, keep the resolution, that would be nice. But uh, is it re realistic to have really small, like such a um, complex structure in the in on the screen, in like below the screen? Yeah, it's very, very, you know, practical. The only thing is you're gonna have a thicker phone. 
Yeah. Okay. That's so it's going to be thicker. Yeah, that's uh, the only challenge uh, we need to work on. But one LED is like, I don't know, micrometer size? It's yeah. very small, yeah. right? Yeah. But can, can just do it as a 3D structure? Yeah, we, we can, can uh, like yeah, because... Uh, companies can do it. Yeah, we, we did use, there are new, uh, 3D printers, so we could achieve even one millimeter by one millimeter, uh, like making nine uh, islands. Mm -hmm. So if you could go to the, you know, the facilities like NanoScriber or all those advanced tools, mm -hmm. so you can get. But of course, um, uh, I, I know what you mean. So there's a little bit of challenge, you know, mm -hmm. to get like to the very small or tiny size. Yeah. yeah but yeah, I mean, it depends on the application. Maybe you don't need yeah. such a yeah. high uh, resolution. Yeah, for phone, it's very small, but for, yeah. you know, science other, or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you. That was really interesting. Yeah, it was a very good, comprehensive, very nice talk. Thank um, you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first one is related to tin as an alt material. So, graphite is the lightest element, then the silicon, then the germanium, and the tin. So tin has this drawback of being heavy element. You know, like, do you have any comment? Yes, it is very good as it seems. It doesn't have this cracking nature and other things, but it is on the other hand is a heavy element. And weight is quite important for battery. Yeah, uh, to, to, you know, to uh, tackle those uh, like issues, we are more concerned about uh, weight uh, capacity, mm -hmm. you know, per mm -hmm. gram capacity. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, um, and also when we go down to the micro size, Okay, so our, our main active material is going to be uh, very less as compared to current collector. So because they are like, uh, there are pores, if you see the, the other part of well, the... Well, dice sulfide. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are pores. So, I mean, there are different technologies that people can work on to, to tackle those issues. The first thing is to make it commercialized. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And second question is related to... Yeah, yeah, I will show you. Yeah. It's very good point. Yes. Here, you can see. Yes. So um, uh, the, the, the mechanism is uh, clamping, okay? Right. If you have a shell, right. so you will have a clamping, so that shell can hold or, or help to hold the expansion, right? But it has uh, issues of low capacity and cyclic life. Mm -hmm. So it lowers that? Yep. Okay, substantially. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Last question, and then I will stop. So you create this uh, uh, stretchable turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To cool it, basically, right? To cool this to, area. To heat it. Heat it. Okay, yep. heating, cooling, doesn't matter. So how do you heat it? Uh, because, okay, yeah, how do you heat it? Yeah, yeah. okay. So you see, we have uh, the um, interconnects. It's stretchable because, uh, let's say, if this is the case, um, here you can see. So these are made of copper, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And uh, these are uh, interconnects between two islands. So it will be stretchable, so this is a mechanism. Okay. So how it heats, because this is a copper, this is a metal. Right. So you just run through the, the current. 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 But, that's metal. but it is it's not resistive. Yeah, yeah. It's not no, uh, no it, it will induce the, the heat. It will heat up. So it will be enough to heat a little bit, so, yeah. so that like, it will like, help your muscles to release. Basically. Yeah, that's, that's the main point. Because if we go for high temperature, it's, not, you know, it's actually painful. So you have to get a very uh, low temperature. There's a control right. temperature, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, that's why we choose metal. So what's the typical current you apply for it? Uh, it's 200 micron ampere or and 100 micron ampere. Yeah, yeah, it's enough. Just a little bit. So very right. little, it's you not. Cannot, you're very high, you can burn yourself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and also it's not risky. Uh, it's not a regular heat pad, right? No, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The regular heat pads use thermal, thermal chemistry. Yeah, 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 chemicals. Yes, true, true, but true. That's why I use yeah. yeah. And that's, that's uh, the regular one is not, you know, reusable. Right. Yeah. Once it is, you know, like when you break this, then... It's gone. Done. Yep. yep. Thank you very much, Nadine. You're welcome. Uh, well, very great presentations. Thank I would like to give you the uh, certificate of attendance. So Thank you so much. Hope to see you next time here. Right? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Actually, next speaker, Dr. Sergey Taskev, is not here, so we have to break, and then we will come back uh, 12 to 10.
So let's break. In ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. minutes break. So okay. which means we can have practice yeah. discussions. Yeah, yeah, we can have yeah, yeah. That is how we organize this seminar. Yeah. Anyway. So actually, I had a short question. So I have some questions also. <laughs> <laughs>